All right, so moving on to the document object model or the DOM, your page on JavaScript. So the document object model, what does that even mean? It means we treat a document as an object, okay? So we treat a document as an object. So let's read through this. When a page is requested and then received by a browser, the browser parses the HTML and creates a description or a model of that page. This model is used to draw the page in the browser's viewport. This is the viewport, what we are viewing, right? It also surfaces to JavaScript through the DOM. Meaning we can access and manipulate all the object within the document. We can access them and code, program, you know, calculate whatever you want to do with the data. So it starts at the root of the browser's display functional, uh, functionality, which is the window. This is the window, right? And if I, this is another window, this is another window. Okay, that's a window, this is a window. So the window, from there, the page is encapsulated in window.document. So this uh, window is accessible, or this document is accessible through window.document. With the page's body in window.document.body. Then the, the tree, so this is a tree, like the thing of the DOM as a tree. There's a window, the window has a branch, which is a document, a body, and all the elements of the body, the div, input, button, link, image, video, an ordered list, and the list, and whatever, right? So, from there, the page is encapsulated in window.document with the page's body in window.document.body. Then the tree fans out to every bit of content represented on that page most web pages have a very complex tree with many nodes, finally ending in leaf nodes as the most granular piece of the hierarchy. So if we simply open the source again for this trailhead, this is only JavaScript. I'm going to pass this, pass, pass here. It starts with the head um, main, this is the main. Where's the head? Is where's the title here? The title, right? And then this is the head, right? Can we well? And then it starts with the body. Where's the body part? Um, here, here's the end of the head, and it starts with the body, right? And then we have a div here. The ID of the div is called main wrapper. So if you want to access stuff inside this div, we we reference it by this ID, which is called main wrapper. All right. And then we have the main and the div and all the other stuff. Okay. So let's move on. As an API, the DOM is vast. I mean, it's vast. It's a lot and lets you touch every part of this tree, okay? We can play and work with every part of the document. We'll play with it on this example. It also has a number of methods, methods to optimize interaction with the DOM, okay? So let's take a look at this example from JS Bin. I'm gonna close my source code there, pop this up. So this is the HTML document, right? This is the document. Starts with HTML, ends with HTML. It has a head section within the head tags, starting tag, end tag, and the body section. Start with the body tag, ends with the body tag. And then we have the div, and then this is the 
input form is the ID and so on. So let's see how this work. All right. So this is the output which will be on the browser. This is the JavaScript code of it. And this is the HTML code of it. And then this is the output that we will see on the browser. So if I type one add item, it's adding it to here, right? Two add item and then three add item. And if I even put blank, it keeps adding it. So what's, how did that happen? Let's go line by line. So first we declare three variable with the let keyword, let button. So a new variable called button that is referencing to the document, this whole document, which object, right? We use the method. We want to, we want to access it using the method called the method is named get element by ID. So that is a method from the document object. It's called get element by ID. What ID? The submit ID. So if you look for it, this button has an ID and its name submit, right? So the button variable refers to this particular button, which is this one add item okay so document get element by id submit which is the submit is the name of the id referencing this whole thing which is the button moving on the new item is the document again get element by id item input item input is the id here right so it's an input um, element the idea of it is item input and it's a text input, which is this part here. This is the item input. Okay, so that's the new item variable. All right, then the last one is the list, which is this part here. This is the list, which is blank, right? The list, the same thing, document dot get element by ID, the list. So we are using the get element by ID method. Which one? Which one do we want to play with? Which Lego piece is the list? This one. Oh, this is this one. So the unordered list, UL stands for unordered list with the ID, the list, right? This. So this is, um, this is it. So we're making that a variable. All right. Now the fun part, modify the DOM by adding click to the button. So this button, right this button this button dude we add a event listener so whatever is happening with this button javascript is listening to it you know like a detective or like a spy or whatever is <laughs> listening to the button what is he what is the button doing here so the button add a method which add event listener what kind of event? Oh, we want to hear for the click event. We have a click event. So we have a on mouse over, on blur, on focus, whatever. So we're using the click event. And then we declare a function if this event ever occur, right? What can we do if somebody clicks on this button? An event occur, so this code will run right so first we're going to declare another variable let text node document dot create text node this is another method well we're not going to go too deep into this but you get the you get the gist right you get the idea right this is another method create text node what is the value the new item value the new item is this one right this is the new item this new item is, is the input element, the value of it. What is the value? Whatever you type in it, that's the value. This is the value, okay? So the text node variable will contain the value of whatever you type in here, okay? And then you create another variable, let new list item, and it's gonna use the create element method 
create element, document, create element. What kind of element? A list element. Oh, it's a list element. Okay. So then we, we, we use another method, new list item, which is this one, a pen child. How would you know to what kind of method is available? Well, you can refer to the reference later on, but this is just a, a trying out how things works, just for you to understand how things connects, okay? So there's a method called append child. You know, append means, right? Add, add or append. So the new list item, append child, what are we going to append? The text node, okay? The text node. Um, what text note? This one, which is this value. So append that to this list. Oh, it's getting pretty fun, right? And then insert that list into the UL, on, into the unordered list item. So uh, the list, append child method, new list item, add it to the this guy here, which is this guy, which is this guy. Okay, it's all linked together, linked together okay so and then and then that's it it is gonna keep adding it whenever somebody clicks on the button click it's listening oh for a click we're just gonna listen for a click nothing else we don't care about a mouse over we don't care about whatever right we just listen for a click if there's a click the function will run and this whole thing will get added boom see like boom right so um, that's how it works basically so I'm gonna go back and move forward so we've talked about this each time you click on the button the code reaches into the input field right it reaches into this input field right and then what it reads its value which is boom converts it to a text node creates a new list element insert the text code into the list node and finally sticks that new list and text node into the ul element whoa that's what it's doing right so we have a takeaway here this is the takeaway as you can see just this simple example requires the developer to perform a bunch of manual steps right we're just going to do this function boom 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 but it requires um, a lot of stuff that we are writing our own with our own little fingers we code this stuff to create this thing here right that's a waste of time what if we want to build a whole application like google maps it's gonna take forever well this is where the libraries come come in okay so a bunch of manual steps and it doesn't even store any data yet on a server or interact with a server or play with the satellite or do shoot um, whatever, <laughs> a missile or a drone or whatever, right? And you already have to write these um, codes and take you 10 minutes to type it up. But for this reason, JavaScript libraries or any library for that reason, like a Python library, Java library, Apex library, whatever library, C, C++, whatever language you're learning, the function of libraries for this example, Java, like React, JS, jQuery, and framework like Angular, Vue.js, have become a standard of interactive pages. The standard for interactive pages, meaning, if you want to create a cool UI, you don't have to write every single line of code yourself. You will just use libraries and tap into those libraries and just use them. Like for example, I'm just making this up, okay? Um, I'm just making this up. So for example, I want to um, uh, use a Google map and I'm just going to uh, uh, new map equals um, initiate Google map, whatever, something like that, <laughs> you know? And and with that, and then you create a, 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 a new Google map object to play with. So this doesn't exist, okay, I'm just making this up. 
that's the 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 reason of uh, why what why we want to use libraries so we don't have to write a million line of codes and and waste another um 10 months but we can just use the libraries which um other developers other um, group of developers have already made available so for this purposes we are going to tap into the lightning component framework all right the lightning component framework has its own libraries that will make our life easier to make cool as kicking application all right so so we're not gonna write line by line for every single th functions you wanna make it happen. We'll just tap into existing um, LWC libraries. All right, so that's the, the whole point. So what about this en um, encapsulation with Shadow DOM? The Shadow DOM, what is this for? So, so let's read this. The DOM API is rich and flexible. Using a relatively simple JavaScript, it is easy to make changes to the look, behaviors, and actions invoked by the user interface. But there is a pitfall. The DOM model makes it difficult to encapsulate pieces of the UI. What is encapsulate means? It's protected. You'll see. And protect them from accidental or purposeful like a hacker and malicious changes all right so for this reason the shadow dom standard was developed shadow dom creates a boundary so it creates a boundary around a particular part of ui functionality the boundary prevents a parent from changing the elements or css of a child it also forces any events propagated across the boundary to rescope their targets, preventing the parent from reaching across the shadow DOM boundary. Well, in single, uh, simple terms, it just protects our um, code from accidental alteration. All right. So for example, I want to make um, this part of the text, right? um what purple i want to i want to make it purple but i'm not doing it with this google chrome extension but i'm making it with a css i'm going to make it purple but just this part right so i don't want to accidentally change other parts of the documents to become purple as well well that's kind of like a shallow example on on how the shadow boundary works so um you can't accidentally because other codes the child codes will have probably a same variable you know on another javascript um in um uh, source somebody uh, used the list as well as a variable name well if there is no boundary if you alter something here it'll mess up the other one right we don't want that so that's basically you know how it works you just need to know that uh, javascript has this feature so that um, it will be safer okay it's a secure uh, platform to use so also there can be um, um, an injection of somebody from from outside like altering for example this and then this is this lives in the salesforce trailhead right now this cannot be changed from an outside injection becoming five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It will not allow it because of the, the DOM, the boundary, the shadow boundary. So, or well, something like that. All right. So, there is en encapsulation with the shadow DOM. All right. I think I'm going to cut the video here before it goes too long. Um, we're going to move on with the Lightning Web Components and the DOM and then finish off. Maybe on the same video, Lightning Web Component and the DOM and the Lightning Component Framework, our components and Lightning Web Components on here. Well, yeah. Yeah, let's split it on the next video. 
So I'll see you on the next video and also we'll do the quiz on the next video. Bada bing, bada boom. Hit that subscribe button and explore new trailhead grounds and learn to implement the most useful and popular apps on the Salesforce app exchange. And do yourself a favor, like this video and you'll be surprised on how much more you understand when watching this same video after liking it. Don't take my word watch this one more time after you like the video and see it for yourself bada bing bada boom